Hey guys, welcome to the next instalment version video in the Whiteboard Wednesday series. Today we're going to be talking around offset accounts. So I'll be following on the last couple of um, weeks where we've been talking about offsets versus redraws, etc, etc. And I'm going to focus on what I deem to be the true benefit associated with an offset account. Again, disclaimers around not being a financial planner or accountant. Get them to double check in the day that this is relevant, accurate and also appropriate for yourself. Um, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to use the example you would have seen, those that have watched the last two weeks, my perfect circles, starting to look a little bit faded. Um, we're going to start, I want to use the example of uh, an investment loan. So let's say this $500,000 uh, loan is an investment loan and we've got 50 grand parked in an offset. For that to be the case, you'd like to think that you had no um, home loan debt, um, but that's another, that's another video. Um, and over in this scenario, we've got our loan facility, just the one home loan facility with a redraw um, uh, facility uh, attached to it or included with it, I should say, um, and you've got access to 50 grand. So let's start over on this side to understand the benefit associated with that. If I had a, a loan that I paid down to 450, uh, an investment loan that was down to 450,000 bucks, if I decided to redraw, I've got 50, access to 50 grand there, but say I decided to redraw, redraw 20 grand and I went and bought a car. Straight away, I've got a car for personal use. Straight away, I've got what's called a mixed purpose loan and your accountant's not gonna exactly love you. What I mean by that is, you can only claim interest on your tax return of 450,000. Just because you've borrowed this 20 grand within the context of investment loan, the purpose of the borrowings is the true test as to whether it's deductible. And now you've got what's called a mixed purpose loan. 450 grand's worth of investment debt, and you've got $20,000 worth of owner-occupied or personal debt that can't be claimed. Jump over here, and in the same scenario, the loan balance um, is preserved here at 500,000 and instead of having the 50 grand in redraw, as we've discussed before, I've got it in an offset account. If I wanted to access and borrow, to take 20 grand out for my car, I'd simply take it from the offset account and my offset account um, balance would reduce to $30,000 and I would be paying interest on 470 grand. No different from here, but the difference being is that's clean. The $500,000 investment loan has not been touched and any interest that's um, uh, charged against it, or I suppose is, or yeah, charged against it, is claimable on your tax. So uh, that's the, the, the first scenario. The other benefit, uh, let me just grab my, my whiteboard eraser here is in the situation whereby, let's, you, let, let's change the purpose and let's say it's a home loan. Now, if this is my home loan, and, and this is a decision that you have to, and it's sometimes hard to make, but uh, make at the start, what's your intention with the property? So a lot of people out there will go out, they'll buy a place, and it, down the track they'll look to upgrade, and the question will come up, should I actually hold on to my existing home as an investment property? Well, in this scenario, if I start here, Again, remember the purpose test. So here, if this is my own home and I decide to keep it as an investment property and I redraw that 50,000 bucks out to put it towards a deposit on my next property. And let's just say that next property value, oh, I had to borrow 500,000 bucks. I can only claim the interest. This converts to an investment property. It was my home. I can only claim the interest on 450,000. I can't claim the interest on the 500,000 because that 50 grand has been drawn out for the purpose of buying my own home. So the mix of debt that we've got here is we've got 450,000 bucks worth of investment debt now and we've got $550,000 worth of owner occupied debt. Jump over here and what you would find is in that same circumstance, I go and buy myself the same property I take on another $500,000 worth of debt. The difference being is I would draw the 50 grand out of my offset account and guess what? This loan balance has not changed at all, presuming it was an interest only loan and you hadn't had principal reduction on it anyhow. But that $500,000 loan, I can claim the interest on all of that. And if I put 50 grand cash towards this next property, my loan um, that I would have outstanding would only be four, let's say it was 450. Now, in this scenario, in this scenario, my outstanding debt is still the same. The only difference is the mix of it. 
Here I've got 550 worth of owner occupied, $450,000 worth of investment. Here I've got 500 of each. And at the end of the day, there's a slight difference there then in terms of what I can claim and therefore um, to my end net sort of position. So that's the true benefit associated with an offset. Yes, it requires some planning. Yes, it requires some forethought. Whenever you're sitting down and especially making that first purchase, one of the first questions that we, would, uh, we ask here at Finance Path is, what's your big picture? What's your plans? And is there the opportunity or the potential, I should say, that this property would be uh, an investment property down the track. Hope that clears it up for you. I look forward to catching up with you next week.